much. It's uh, it's good to see everybody again. And um, you know what I think you've seen this morning uh, is a growing international interest in uh, lunar exploration and science. Uh, partnered with that, we're also seeing a um, an emerging privately funded uh, exploration capabilities that are being developed with the uh, with the moon as a goal. Um, and this has uh, really enabled NASA uh, to, uh, to be able to capitalize on these public-private partnerships and uh, leverage from some of these capabilities that are being developed either internationally or uh, privately to, uh, to be able to gather additional science data or data that could help uh, human exploration uh, in the future at much lower cost and, and lower risk to us. Um, three examples that are out there that, that just come to mind is there's the uh, innovative uh, lunar demonstration data uh, where we can purchase data associated with industry efforts uh, that are doing robotic missions. Um, the uh, Lunar Orbiter Image uh, Recovery Project, which you see an incredible image of, I believe that's the Copernicus crater uh, that was recovered off of uh, data tapes back from 1967-ish. And if you think about that, you can take uh, uh, LRO data that is 2009 and, uh, and look back at, at how different uh, parts of the moon have changed over the last 42 years. And that data was just sitting in a, in a warehouse until some, uh, some individuals uh, took the initiative to go out and get funding and to work with NASA and try and develop that. Um, the one I'm here to talk about today is uh, the Google Lunar X Prize. Um, 26 teams, uh, as multiple different uh, activities that uh, they will uh, deliver prize money for uh, different uh, private teams accomplishing. One of them is, is to go and image some of the uh, Apollo historic sites. Um, and so the discussion came up about a year and a half ago, two years ago, as to um, how do you protect those sites but also allow uh, scientists to learn from uh, materials degradation, uh, the science equipment that is out there. How do you protect the historical and, and cultural heritage of those sites, but also do that? And we had a great partner uh, with, uh, with the Google uh, team and, um, and also with a lot of the different teams that were working it. Um, so this morning we're going to, uh, NASA's going to, to uh, issue a press release uh, concerning the, uh, the Google X Prize, uh, recognizing those guidelines uh, for protecting those heritage sites. Uh, and there are guidelines that I think it's a grand total of 22 of them that they talk about how do you overfly an Apollo heritage site? Uh, how do you approach it if you're on the ground with either a rover or a hopper? Uh, and it's really, if, if you read it, it is, uh, it is a partnership of, of guidance as to we would like to work with the different teams and, uh, and really, really uh, optimize on, on how that data is acquired while protecting those sites as well. Um, I understand, and, and Alex will, will tell you more about this, that um, they'll use those guidelines as part of the way it, it judges the mobility plans uh, submitted by their 26 teams. Uh, and these teams really have been a big part of the development of, uh, of these guidelines. Um, it was clear early on that, uh, that there was a very common interest in protecting these sites while, uh, while accomplishing their scientific goals. Um, and I would, I would also add, just for people that think, you know, what is, um, uh, what is the legal precedent here? I would say that, that because of that common interest, the, the guidelines do not represent uh, mandatory U.S. or international requirements. Rather, NASA provided them to inform the mission planners that are working through these very aggressive missions uh, and that they are also interested in, in helping to preserve and protect those historic artifacts and, uh, and science. So I just want to thank uh, Alex and her team and the, uh, the teams that are involved in the Google Lunar X Prize uh, for working with NASA so that we can achieve those common goals. And there will, Alex is going to talk now, but uh, there is a, um, uh, a panel at uh, 2 o'clock today, and uh, more detailed uh, information will be, uh, will be given then. Thank you very much. John. This has been a, a fabulous conference so far, and um, what I love about this is that I can stand here and say we are going back to the moon. 
you can, you can have your different roadmaps, but you know, the Google Lunar X Prize teams, their goal is to get back to the moon. And what has also been wonderful about this conference is the amount of discussion that has gone on about how we need a large number of small robotic spacecraft to enable us to explore in situ resource utilization, to learn about these airless bodies so that humans can follow, so that our path back out into the solar system is going to be enabled in very great measure by small robotic uh, instrumentation. So while the Google Lunar X Prize teams do indeed have their eye on the prize, the $20 million first prize and, and the bonus prizes, they actually have a much bigger prize in mind, and that bigger prize is enabling uh, future development and future exploration of the solar system, and, and that's just tremendously exciting. As John said, um, the Google Lunar X Prize early on recognized the human interest in going back to the Apollo sites and taking a look. Everybody is curious about uh, what's happened over the last 40 plus years to those sites. And so within the Google Lunar X Prize, one of the bonus prizes is available for imaging an Apollo site. But that does come with a tremendous responsibility that was recognized extremely early on by the teams competing for the Google Lunar X Prize. How do we go back and how do we go back in a manner that is going to help us learn but is also respectful of this uh, amazing accomplishment, this watershed for humanity? And so that's why we were really delighted that NASA was so willing to bring an amazing team of experts together to brainstorm and to think about what do we know, what can we predict about what has happened to those sites and what can we suggest in terms of advice and guidance um, in order for us to you know, avoid uh, damaging them too much, but also what kind of things can we think about where we could mutually work together to say, okay, there are priorities here. There are some things that absolutely we need to, to try our best to preserve for as long as possible. But we can learn so much by finding out what has happened to the materials, to those artifacts on the moon. So how can we work together to devise mobility plans, devise ways in which these small robotic craft are going to explore the lunar surface? That will also help us return some real uh, useful science science data. So, you know, I think that is, has been an incredible uh, partnership to date and will continue to be a partnership as NASA makes available uh, both those guidelines and the people that have been thinking about them uh, to continue the, the discussion for teams. And there's one other point I wanted to make and, and we'll expand upon this a little more this afternoon. Um, just a, a quick straw poll here. You know, you're all lunar scientists or explorers. You know about space. You know it's a pretty harsh environment on the moon. And uh, we all grew up with those grade school pictures of, you know, the, the stars and stripes on the moon, the pristine, crispy footprint, the shiny rover. We all know it probably doesn't look like that anymore. So how many of you in the room think that there's still a flag on the end of that pole? Okay. How many of you think it's still got any color on it? Okay. This is good. We've got some, this is, you can debate this over coffee. But the point <laughs> I want to make is, one of the things we're doing with the Google Lunar X Prize is trying to engage people in thinking about going back to the moon and why we want to go back. We want to go back to learn and to further explore. But a very simple thing that we can do, and, and try it with your family and friends, have this discussion. What do you think is left of the flag? It's a, it's a cool discussion. Gets into all kinds of discussions about 1960s nylon and, and so on, if you really want to go there. But... Um, but what's interesting is that we're not going to know until we go, until we get back. So until one of those Google Lunar X Prize teams lands and takes a picture, then you'll be able to turn to the person next to you and go, see, told you so. And you know how much that engages kids and the public? It's, it's a really powerful tool to get people starting to think about, okay, the flag is a small example, but it is indicative of the science and of the information that we can discover by going back and going back to stay. Anyway, hope to see many of you at two o'clock this afternoon, and again, want to uh, very much thank NASA and the team of experts that have helped us put together these guidelines so that uh, our teams can bring back some great information from the lunar surface. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.